So here we have Anya Paranpal, journalist of the Gray Zone, here at the anti-war protest in front of the White House. Um, what would you say are some of the major events that led us to attack Iran? Well, a war with Iran has been a goal of the permanent war state for, I mean, decades, honestly, since we overthrew the United States along with British intelligence, overthrew their first democratically elected prime minister in 1953. But then again, since 1979 and the birth of the Islamic Revolution, the United States has waged a war of aggression, su uh, supporting Saddam Hussein in the brutal Iran-Iraq war throughout the 80s, supplying him with chemical weapons to use against the Iranian people. And then in 2003 or 2004, George W. Bush, former president, gives his infamous Axis of Evil speech, and Iran, of course, is included in that list, the Axis of Evil, along with Iraq and North Korea, eventually they add Cuba and Syria to the list as well. And that was really a wish list for regime change. The United States is very clear in its intention to attack the sovereign and independent rights of the Iranian people. And so the Trump administration is just the latest chapter in this war. That's why from within his inner circle, we see pressure from some of the chicken hawks he had on his national security team. He had John Bolton for a while, a very dangerous figure who was pushing him closer to war last summer. He has Jared Kushner, his son-in-law, who's very close to Prime Minister Netanyahu and the Israeli government. And this is a war they want. This is also a war that the military-industrial complex in the United States wants, in the U.S. Empire would like. They want to control the trade routes, the oil that passes through the Strait of Hormuz, and they would like to get their hands on Iran's natural resources as well. So we saw Trump act on a whim, essentially from his generals who presented him with these options, and he decided to assassinate a high-ranking Iranian military general, an act of war, uh, even though, honestly, as I said, we've been openly waging war on the Iranian people for decades. So... I only expect it to continue in this direction, even though the Iranian people and the Iraqi people are showing that they're ready to fight back. Mm -hmm. So would you say that the mainstream media is a big proponent that manufactures people's consent to get into these wars? Yes. The mainstream media, the corporate media, it is an arm of the national security state. It dutifully reports and repeats the falsehoods which the permanent war state uses in order to to go to the public mm -hmm. into supporting a war, whether that's the chemical weapons attacks in Syria, where they were not willing to question some of the information coming out of Syria at the time, and now we've seen multiple whistleblowers from the Organization for the Prohibition of Chemical Weapons actually leak information and say that these were cooked up intelligence reports, reports suggesting that the Syrian government wasn't responsible for the use of chemical weapons, were repressed. So the mainstream media ran with that at the time. They never come back and issue a correction or interview the people who start to question these narratives. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to Iran, I mean, they for so long were telling us that the Iranians, for example, were pursuing a nuclear bomb that was just taken for granted by U.S. media when the Ayatollah himself has said that he doesn't want Iran to to develop a nuclear weapon. It goes against the, the Islamic character mm -hmm. of their revolution and their state. So, so I would like to see the mainstream media question more, but I don't really expect that to happen. So that's why I myself and other independent journalists make an effort to, to build sources and get information mm -hmm. so that we can challenge these really dangerous stories, these lies that are told continuously in order to put us in the position of supporting war. So where else I could people go anyway. so that they can get more accurate information? Where can they find your journalism? I'm on the Gray Zone, G-R-A-Y-Z-O-N-E. You can find us on YouTube. I have a show on the Gray Zone called Red Lines, and my colleague Aaron Mate is also there as well. We have articles on our website. Uh, Brian Becker, he helped organize this march. He has a wonderful show called Loud on Cl and Clear on Sputnik Radio. I suggest everyone listen to that as well. Anya Perenpol, journalist of the Gray Zone, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, guys.